Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, this time I'm going to cover a bit about my setup and uh, because I found it interesting anyway and it's something that's uh, different from what I saw around on YouTube. And by that I mean that it's uh, a combination of two things actually. You may have noticed already that uh, I have this panel down here. And uh, this panel down here is essentially, it comes from XFCE4. If you, if you have used Linux for any amount of time, you know that. I'm going to put this in another workspace. So this is the XFC desktop environment and this is the panel from it. But what you may have also noticed is that uh, I have a tiling window manager going on. So in case you don't know what a tiling window manager is, it's essentially a window manager that tiles windows. So whenever I spawn a new window, it's going to appear tiling just like that. And I can control the orientation of the tiling, for example, with the key press. I can also make them all appear uh, horizontally. It's pretty nice if you've got some screen real estate, but I find that it's also better for organizing because uh, say if I'm writing a report, I always want one half of my screen to be the source and another half to be the PDF reader, for example. So I find that there's a lot of use cases where having this and not really needing to use the mouse because you can see that I move between windows using the keyboard. This makes it, uh, this makes it so that tiling window managers are more productive for me at the very least. So with that said, the tiling window manager that I'm using is i3. And there are other window managers around there is DWM, for example. Uh, I think that Awesome is also a window manager. Uh, so you, you have your choices again. What I'm going to show you is a uh, distro, uh, distro independent and most likely a uh, window manager independent as well. So if you want to do this for another window manager, you most likely can. And uh, I'm going to show you guys how. Obviously, if you have to install software, you're going to install software using your package manager, but that's the only caveat. As long as you have access to all the software that I'm installing, it's going to be all right. So let's get right to it. Uh, in, uh, in order to install stuff, I'm going to use this one virtual machine. I'm going to put it in full screen. And this is a clean installation of Void Linux. The only thing that I did is I finished installing it and I updated XPPS so that we can start installing stuff right away. So let's do this. And the first thing that you want to install is your window manager. In my case, it's going to be i3. So for void Linux, that's the command i3. I'm going to install the i3 gaps version. And I'm also going to install nitrogen, which is uh, the wallpaper manager, because we are going to remove the desktop, uh, the desktop uh, daemon, I guess you can call it, that manages wallpapers for XFC. And we're going to replace it with this that's more compatible with i3. And this is what you would usually install if you were on i3 yourself. So you're going to install nitrogen and you're going to install D menu just so that uh, we can call it if we need it. And I don't need to install i3 blocks, which is the panel for uh, i3, because again, we're going to use the panel that comes with XFC instead, which is graphical. I'm going to install that really quickly. Yes. And once you have that installed, the next step is going to be to configure your XFC, uh, sorry, to configure your i3. Because again, if you just you know, if you just try running i3, obviously it's not going to work right now, but it has no configuration. So in order for us to configure, I'm just going to make a directory on my home folder that's called a .i3. And usually if you put a config file inside of this one specific directory, it's going to read it whenever i3 starts. So the simplest way that I've found is I'm going to copy over the network from my host to my to my virtual machine. In case you don't know how to do that, I'm going to use an SCP command with this IP address, which is the IP address of my machine on my home network because it's in a bridged adapter mode. And if you don't know what any of that means, again, you just need to know that you have to put a configuration on your virtual machine. And uh, how you do that is up to you. So I'm going to copy my own config file, which is this. And I'm going to SCP it inside my void user on my void machine, 1681103. And then I'm going to put it in the location that I made. So home void dot i3. And this should do it. I do need to fix my SSH because I recently changed my VM. So in case you don't know how to do that, um, you can just uh, go to uh, this place where it tells you. So you go to SSH known hosts and you remove the key that's giving you collisions. So in this case, I'm going to remove the second entry. 
And now I should SCP just fine. Yes, have to give the password. So notice that now I have the config file from my host copy to my to my virtual machine. And I'm just going to modify it ever so slightly because I don't have all the all the all the software installed. I'm going to change this term just for demonstration purposes. I'm going to put it as XFC for terminal, which is the only terminal that I have installed on this VM. And other than that, uh, I think that I have the other software installed. So I'm going to put it as in full screen again, quit. And now I3 is configured properly. So whenever we start it, we are going to have our usual uh, key presses and key bindings in order to start software. Now, the next thing that you need to do is essentially you need to remove the window manager that comes with XFC and you need to remove the desktop manager that comes with it. And then you replace those with nitrogen and you replace those with I3. In order to do that, you, you can open up the applications here. You go to settings and then on settings manager, you choose the session and startup. And now you're going to go to the current session tab. And this tab is actually where kind of the services linked to XFC exist. So the two services that we don't need anymore that we're going to replace are XFWM, which is the XFC window manager. We're going to set it to never restart, which means that the next time we boot, it won't be there. And we also can remove the XF desktop because we don't need a, like a, these, these things and we don't need the, the wallpaper. Uh, so I'm going to set it to never as well. I'm not going to quit them just yet. Before that, I'm going to add a new, a new auto start application. And this auto start application is going to be I3 so that we have a window manager starting together with the XFC session. I'm going to set this to I'm, the name and the description don't really matter. You just need to pay attention to the command and the command is the command that you would run on the CLI in order to start I3. So we saw that it's just I3 and it will trigger on login. I'm going to okay that. And uh, this should be good. So the last thing that you can do if you want is you could remove the key bindings related to your XFC term, uh, to your XFC desktop environment. And uh, so that they don't conflict with uh, the, with the key bindings on your, on your I3 setup. So in order to do that, you go to keyboard and you go to application shortcuts. You can simply shift select everything and then hit remove. So with regards to config, this should be everything that we need. And we're going to reboot this machine really quickly and see whether or not it's working. Now, it's, since it's running on run it again, it's going to boot very relatively quickly. It's not a very powerful VM. I just put one gig of RAM and uh, but still, it should be rather quick. Again, the void is very minimal once you install it. So there's really not that much that it needs to start. Okay, so we're on the um, login. Let's hit enter. And now let's check. So notice that I don't have my my wallpaper, which is usual, we just remove the XF desktop. Notice I do have my application, my panel down here. And now I'm going to try using one of my three key bindings. I'm going to hit yes, uh, super enter in my case. And notice that this opens up a terminal. In this case, it opens the XFC one. So it comes with this uh, kind of ugly decoration. You can always re remove the decoration on the, on the settings if you want. But I also recommend that you use something like URXVT or something like ST if you prefer. And uh, once that is done, again, you have essentially achieved the, the basic setup. Now it's a matter of uh, customizing it. Uh, usually people install different types of uh, uh, different types of uh, programs. So most likely you're going to, want, if you want that nice, uh, let me just show my, on my host, if you want the nice um, kind of transparency effect, you're going to install Compton. And uh, this is one of the usual ones that get installed. Let's also check that the menu is working. Notice that I press my shortcut for the menu. I can type stuff in here. And I have, I have a, a kind of a prompt. So if I don't want to go down here on the applications and look for it, 
again. And uh, what is nice about the XFC uh, panel is that it's very customizable. So I'm going to just uh, open it up, add new items, and you can add all kinds of stuff. So you can add your own, uh, for example, I, I, uh, I think that you need to install some other stuff. So I'm going to do something XPPS query, RS XFC. And you have a lot of plugins. So if you want to install other plugins, say there is this very useful Pulse Audio plugin, which essentially is the volume controller. Uh, there is another one that's the task manager. Uh, a weather plugin I used to use, it's also kind of helpful if you want. So you have plugin to do most of the things that you could program on, um, on i3 blocks if you had it. And you also have uh, one that is, uh, you also have the battery, everything power manager. And uh, one of the most usual, useful of them is the, I, I don't remember what the name of it, but there is also one plugin that allows you to make custom, essentially pa panel entries, just like you would, uh, just like you would program a little script on, for example, i3 blocks in order to get a specific, uh, say a, we a website uh, response, for example, if you were if you wanted to uh, make a network uh, a network throughput test, for example. So there is also a configurable plugin that allows you to make your own custom entries on this panel if you want to customize it even further. And that's just to say that uh, with regards to i3 blocks, I think that this looks nicer and it also retains most of the useful functionalities of it so this pretty much sums it up from now on you should do it on your own and this is just a matter of installing the software thank you very much guys and i'll see you next time